the bullet idli or the button idli is here, especially the sambar, reminds me of the sort that I'd probably find in uh, South Canara. I wonder if there's a South Canara connection to this place. Building is some hundred years. Hundred years old. We got a small tile, uh, 1901. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Roast. That's a dosa that's really soft. Well, when it comes to the breakfast of champions here in uh, Kerala, God's own country, it's the uh, puttu, and the traditional accompaniment to it is the kadla curry. Well, I have the Peri Peri Idli, which I'm told is an innovation of the restaurant. Namaskara folks, this is Kripal Amana, Gourmet on the Road and you're watching Food Lovers TV. I hope you're doing well, I hope you're staying safe and strong. We're at the Ernakula Teppan here in Ernakulam in Kochi, one of the oldest Shiva temples in Kerala. And right opposite this temple is also an eatery that goes back many, many decades. We are here for breakfast at Gokul Utapura here in Ernakulam. Well, there certainly seems to be a buzz to the place. And uh, today is also a Saturday. Always nice to see some sweet treats when you find your way into a restaurant. Some ladu, some jangiri and some uh, obattu. I wonder what they call this in Malayalam. Namaskaram. What's your name? My name is Jiji. Jiji? Yeah. So Jiji, what I'll do is I will start with some coffee. Uh, filter coffee? Filter coffee. Thank you. This is a Padimukam. The bullet idli or the button idli is here, especially the sambar, reminds me of the sort that I'd probably find in uh, South Canara. I wonder if there's a South Canara connection to this place. Not that I'm looking for one, but uh, you know my theory about great vegetarian restaurants and the people, the folks of Mangaluru, Udupi, Kundapura. Thank you very much. Good coffee for sure. An important measure of a good South Indian breakfast restaurant is the filter coffee. Is the attention that they pay to the filter coffee. Be it in the beans or the coffee powder and also in the manner in which it is prepared. I would have liked it a little stronger but by itself, it certainly is a coffee that uh, is a gentle wake-up call in the morning. Hello. Uh, hello. Namaskara. Namaskara. What's your name, ma'am? Meena. Meena Mohan. This is Meena Mohan. Yes. So you are part of the owning family yeah. of Gokul uh, Utupura. 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 Yes. Utupura. What does Utupura mean? In Utupura means the place where you eat. Temples have their uh, eating place, no? Okay. Where devotees come. Okay. After darshan, they will be served food. So that place is called Utupura. And uh, this is an eatery that goes back how many years? My father-in-law started it 70 years back. Where's your father-in-law from? He is from Udupi. Oh, from Udupi? Yeah, he is from Udupi. Gopala Krishna Rao. Mr. Gopala Krishna Rao. Yeah. So he came from Udupi yeah. to Ernakulam. Kerala, yeah. And he set up the restaurant yeah. in the same place? Yes. Father in law passed away. Okay. My husband took over. And then now your sons are also. Yeah, yeah. He passed away 12 years back. Oh, okay. I'm sorry to hear about that. Now we have five branches. This is the first this one. This is the first one. Then second one at Kadavandra. Okay. Then uh, third one in uh, Panambali Nagar. Okay. Fourth one in uh, Highway. Wonderful. Near Oberon Mall. Wonderful. And now we started in uh, Forum Mall also. Oh, okay. Can we go into the kitchen, take a look at what's happening yeah, with you? Sure, sure. Yeah, sure. let's go. The dosa that you get in Kerala yeah. is a little different from the dosa in Karnataka. Yes, slightly 
slightly the ingredients are different. They put only rice and pour radha. And what is the ratio typically? Typically it's 4 is to 1. Four uh, rice. 4 dosa and uh, 3 is to 1 for idli. That's what butter, huh? Yeah, butter ghee mix. This is Podi Masala Dosa now. He's making Podi Masala Dosa. Masala, you refer to the palya, the potatoes? Palya, yeah, potatoes. Ah. Like that bhaji, you know, puri, Ooh. we make bhaji, the same, almost same. Alright. And in the rice that you use? Ground rice only. Grind it for separate for dosa. You grind it separate for dosa, yeah. then you grind the ura dal and then you mix it together you and ferment? ferment? You ferment. Ferment 8 hours. 8 hours. Yeah. So the we previous made, night? The previous night we make the batter, next day early morning it starts. Specifically they people want plain dosa, so they make it like that. We make it as per the request of the customer. Masal dosa. Masal dosa, it will be slightly crispy. Roast. The ghee roast. This is the nay roast. The yeah, roast. roast. And also out here, uh, there is no red rice that goes into the dosa batter. Ponni rice. Actually, it goes ponni rice. That's a white rice. Yeah. That's a milled rice. So that also explains for the color. In some places in Karnataka, we put a little sugar in the mavu, in the batter. Uh, we don't you don't do that. So therefore, the color that you get on the dosa. Menta, you know. Ah, menta. Fenugreek yeah. seeds. Yeah. You put that. Fenugreek seeds. It's basically the rice. Urad dal and menthe. Nothing else. Nothing else. What's in that podi, ma'am? Urad dal. Channa dal. Ah. And uh, red chilli. Red chilli. As a potina. Okay. Uh, and salt. Is that Biadgi chilli? It's not Kashmiri chilli. It's, it's not a regular one. Regular chilli. Well, I think we've seen all that we had to see in the kitchen here at Gokul Utupura. I think it's time to find a table and tuck into some of the breakfast items here. Fantastic food. Thank you. Enjoy. I follow his channel and I keep searching where to go now next Sunday. Where to have good food. I rely on his traditional. Wonderful. What's your name, sir? My name is Om Prakash Bhavane, Professor Om Prakash Bhavane. See you. Have a great day. You too. Yeah. Enjoy your rest of your holiday. Sure, sir. Yeah. See you. Thank you. How does it feel for you to meet customers who are happy? Yeah, I used to do that with my husband. I used uh, to come daily, meet the customers and uh, take their feedback and everything. Now in Cochin, it's floating population. Ah. Before it was not like that. Most of the customers come to our restaurant, we personally know them. Now always new, new, new faces. Like how they came. So people come from different places. I have heard my neighbor hmm. Delhi. He was traveling from somewhere in the train and then uh, co-passengers, they were uh, looking at their itinerary uh. and, and uh, telling each other uh. that now I want to have Puttu Kadala uh. from Gokul Uttupura. Mouth to mouth publicity. Okay. Mouth to mouth, that's yeah. what works the most. That, that's all. What should I order? First of all, you have to choose uh, our special vada, ulundu vada, with uh, two types of chutney we have. Give me one idli, one ulundu vada, and give me one bullet idli. I'll have the nei masala roast, and we'll do one puttu katla curry. So I'm going to make a beginning with that uh, bullet idli. The sambar is thick and has almost soaked into the idli. There's very little of that liquid sambar left, but all of it, as you can see, has found its way into the very inner deeps of the idli. Mm. I love the flavor of the esopotida, the hingu. There's a bit of tartness too that I'm tasting, probably in a bit of the tamarind that's gone into the sambar. What I'm enjoying also is a crunch of the onion. 
and the toasty bite of the curry leaf. What I'm missing though is a bit of that liquidy texture that comes from sambar. Probably I should ask for some extra sambar. Thank you. It's almost as if he read my mind. I want to make a pool of that sambar in that bowl of idli. This is a sambar that's quite thick. There's no sweetness at all. So I think although the roots of the founder trace back to Udupi, the flavors probably have been tuned to make provision for the palates of the people of Kerala. So that's a sambar that's rich in the lentils. There's a fair bit of the onions that you're tasting in there. And the flavor of the hingu, the asafoetida. Now that the bullet idli is moistened with that sambar, I'm enjoying it a lot more, especially with that curry leaf that's crested atop it. That's an idli that's quite small in its size. So is the medu vada. I can't say that I'm a big fan of the idli at first touch because the outside texture has caked a bit. Perhaps also because I'm here at 11.30, so maybe they've done their last batch of idli some time ago. And probably this has been re-steamed, I'm not sure. There's a bit of tartness that I detect in that idli somewhere. I think that's where that chutney will help. Mm. That chutney is delicious. I think this is a pure coconut tenga chutney. Coconut? Ginger? Green chili. Green chili. And the seasoning of the saswe, mustard seeds. Yes, sir, mustard seeds. And curry leaf. Yeah, curry leaf. Very nice. Very freshly grated coconut. A bit of that fleshy sweetness that you're detecting in that. Mm. And I think it's the sort in whose company that slightly dry shitly would benefit. Let's taste now some of that onion chutney. I can taste a bit of the tang that comes from the tomato, a bit of the sweetness that probably is a combination of the tomato and perhaps some jaggery that goes into it, and a bit of the spice of that chili. Do you put jaggery in this? Yeah, yes. Some, why is it sweet? Sweet uh, tomato and onion. No jaggery, sugar a little no bit? No jaggery, no sugar. Yeah. Mmm. And how about some of the ulung? Ulung vada. vada. Well, I think the way they pronounce the words, that's key to saying it right in Malayalam. If you intone it incorrectly, it could mean something else altogether. So, the vade is soft, airy inside. I think the best time to beat a vade is when it just comes off a fryer. There's a bit of the crunch that I'm tasting in that vade. It's a little soft on the inside. Makes for certainly a more pleasing bite than the idli that I just tasted. My favorite of the three things that I've tasted thus far is definitely this bullet idli, which is basically button idli that is soaked leisurely in the sambar. You know what my son, he just called from Trichu ah. and he said, he said he's a very good fan of uh, you, Nepal. Ah. And please ask him, I'm so sorry that he's not here at the moment. Because he had to even know that you are coming. Yeah. Otherwise, he would have gone. He wouldn't have gone to. But for me, it was a pleasant surprise to meet you. <laughs> Convey my best wishes to your son too. Yeah. Peri peri idli. Yeah. When did this idli come into being? Last year only. Ah, so this is your son's innovation. Yeah. Do you like it yourself? Yeah. Thank like you very much. No, many people come to our restaurant just to eat this. This is the... Eat it to masala. Well, I have the Peri Peri Idli, which I'm told is an innovation of the restaurant over the last one year. Basically, button idlis that have been uh, deep fried and then uh, sprinkled over rather liberally with a Peri Peri rub. And then this is served with a sauce that looks quite like a, a Chinese sweet chilli sort of a sauce. But I think before I taste the Peri Peri Idli, I think I should first meet that ghee rose dosa because I suspect that the chili in that, the spices in that may overpower my palate and therefore not allow me to taste the true character of this nei masal dosha. Dosha because we are in Kerala. 
So an interesting character of the dosa here is the fact that this uh, dosa is always a little paler in its color as opposed to let's say what you will find in Karnataka or elsewhere. As I learned from Mrs. Mohan, there is only the Urdu and the rice in a ratio of a one is to four and perhaps a little bit of the fenugreek that goes into it. There's little else that goes in, whether it's the avlaki or the sabaki or the boiled rice, etc. to lend color to the dosa. I'm told there's also no sugar that goes into the panda, into the batter. That also helps in giving that dosa a nice golden brown sort of a shade. And that's the reason why this dosa is quite pale in its color. Also a bit translucent because you can see that palya almost greets you through that dosa. Enough said, let's get to the dosa. Uh, that's a dosa that's really soft. Again, when it comes to the dosa here in Kerala, they're rather thin too when they spread it on the thawa. So especially when you taste it with the palya, you register the dosa just a bit when you place it in your mouth initially. And then that dosa almost dissolves away and all you taste after that is the palya. Potatoes are soft, very creamy. A bit of the onions that you're tasting in that, and of course the lushness of the nei of the tuppa. I want to taste a little more of the dosa as opposed to the palya. I can only taste the lushness of the tuppa of the nei that's gone into the roasting of this dosa. I can almost see the camera through the dosa, and parts of the dosa are quite crisp. and crackling so this is a dosa that's very light light in its appearance light in its weight and also in the manner that it weighs on your tongue and this is the way they love their dosa here in god's own country i want to taste it with some of that chutney with the tenga chutney i love that fold my dosa over just to get a little more weight and now get a double layer of that dosa with some palya The palya is gently seasoned. There's a bit of coriander that I see in there, some lentils, the saswe, the mustard seeds, and some onions that have been nearly browned. Very gentle, very pleasing. I'm normally not a big fan of the crispy bits of a dosa, but out here, that those thin and crispy edges are certainly quite pleasing. In the manner in which they crackle, aided by the flavor of the nei of the ghee. I would taste that sambar by itself. There's some drumstick there. You know me and drumsticks. Never let go of an opportunity. Not very tender. It has lent its body and weight to the sambar. In South Canada, for the idli sambar to bring a bit of thickness into the sambar, some also use the drumstick kernels. If I were to return here, I would probably ask for that ghee roast dosa. The palya is all right. It's quite pleasing in the manner it uh, registers its flavour. But I think it's the dosa, especially the crispy bits that shine in combination with that chutney or also that sambar. Let's pack that dosa aside. And taste some of that uh, peri peri idli. I always have mixed emotions when it comes to things like these, where something traditional has been taken and then transformed into something different altogether. But then I think sometimes these experiments are necessary in order for food to evolve. But I only hope they don't evolve so much that they stray far away from their traditional roots. Anyway, on that sermon, let's try that uh, peri peri idli. That's an idli that's uh, white, crunchy, and very chutpata in the manner its flavors ring on your tongue. I'm also tasting somewhere perhaps that prickling tang that probably comes from some lemon salt. Do you add some lemon salt into your peri peri mix? No. no. What is that sour tanginess? Peri peri masala, uh, chili powder. So I was inquiring with the chef. So they say that they sauce the peri peri masala, and that's what they toss the idli in. So it's almost like a podi tossed idli, but not the podi. This time it's a peri peri masala. 
That's a bit of the chilli in the peri peri masala getting to my throat. I can definitely taste the chilli, a bit of that pointed tartness of some lemon salt that goes into it. It's a tasty snack. Would I call it an idli? Perhaps not. I can also now taste a bit of the sweetness somewhere in that peri peri masala. I like its texture, it's crunchy on the outside, quite crisp. On the inside, it's soft. So if you were to offer this to me as a snack, I would be happy eating it. So in my mind, this is less of an idli, but more of a scrumptious, tasty sort of snack. Kaitala. Favorite breakfast curry. Well, when it comes to the breakfast of champions here in uh, Kerala, God's own country, it's the uh, puttu, which is basically rice, ground rice that is uh, cooked in a steamer with layers of coconut and perhaps a bit of salt. And the traditional accompaniment to it is the kadla curry. So it's basically Bengal gram and there's a seasoning, a tadka of some curry leaf, chilies, etc. The papadams also lend an element of crunch. I want to taste that put to first just by itself. You know, I think coconut is such a versatile ingredient. There's only the rice here, mind you. But that sweetness that you get from the coconut, a bit of the crunch. I can taste some of the aromatic spices that go into the seasoning of that tagula curry. Definitely some star anise there for sure. Super. I love the flavor of that curry. The Bengal gram is cooked just right. Firm yet soft when you bite on it. There's also flecks of onion that you taste in that kadla curry every once in a while. And the fleshy flecks of coconut, freshly grated coconut. I want a little more curry to savor that uh, puttu. I think the kadla is fine, but you know, I've tasted so many dishes now. And I have another tasting at lunch that I don't want to weigh myself down with more of the Bengal gram. But what I definitely want is a flavor that comes from that gravy. The coconut, the onions and the flavor of that garam masala. And I'm told that you should crush some papadam into that mix. Along with a soft bite of the kadala, you also have the crunchy crisp of the papadam. Ele Atta. Thank you. I wasn't expecting to be tasting it, but I'm glad we found it. The Ele Atta. Leaf and Atta basically refers to what's in there. A dumpling of rice stuffed with the sweetness of some jaggery and coconut. I love the earthy sweetness of the jaggery entwined with the fleshy crunch of that coconut. Mm. Can I have a coffee? One coffee. Slight, slightly strong, less sugar. I think this certainly makes for a delicious end to our breakfast here at Gokul Utukura. That's what it depicts, that picture. Yeah, so I'm sure this place has so many memories no, for you. A lot of memories. And I studied in the college nearby. Okay. Here. And uh, I used to come here for... <laughs> and little did you know then? And no, no. We were, ours is a love marriage. Oh, okay, okay. So that's how you came to meet Mr. Yeah, Mohan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, for me, along with the dishes that I tasted, I think the most interesting part was meeting uh, Mrs. Mohan and learning from her the history to this place and also some of those interesting anecdotes 
that places like these abounded. This is a place that goes back to the 1960s. Hundreds and thousands of customers must have passed through its doors. And I'm sure many of them have interesting stories or tales about their time in Gokul Utapura. And I think that's what's special about age-old institutions like these. So I hope you enjoyed my slightly indulgent breakfast here in Ernakulam, Kochi. Until the next time, take care, stay safe, stay strong and happy eating and drinking. So actually, I mean, in a manner of speaking, places like these is not just about the commerce, it's also about the service, right? Service, yes. Not just service as in serving, but it's a service to mankind, in a manner of speaking. Yeah. And that's the traditions that come you know, from yeah, the temples. Yeah, yeah. Your yeah. place is also called Utupura. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And my husband also was very particular that everybody who's coming to our restaurant, even our staff, in many hotels, staff will be having separate food. Yeah. They, they are not allowed to yeah. eat the normal food served serve to the customers. But here there is nothing like that. So make it in plenty and let them also have the same food. Wonderful. And you do this across all your restaurants? Everywhere it is like No separate. Uh, I think this is the first time that I have ever come across an instance like this. Because I think in most places, at least places that I have seen visited, there is always a separate kitchen, separate food that is kept for the staff. Which may be good, but here it's a yeah. different level altogether. Yeah. So you've been in this, involved in this for how many years now? Since 40 years. Maybe. So every day you would go to the restaurant? Yeah, every day I go to the restaurant. Even now? Uh, it, now it's slowed down. Now it's slowed down a bit. No, I'm uh, getting old. <laughs> but I now like my your sons, spirit. <laughs> my yeah. sons are there. Years 100 old. years old. We got a small tile, uh, 1901. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it goes back to the turn of yeah, last century. Yeah, yeah. Uh? We got when we did, when we were doing the uh, renovation, we got a small tile. 1901. Yeah, 1901. How nice is that? Yeah. So it's really a place that's yeah. replete with history. And I kept that tile in, at home. Yeah? yeah, I kept it. I saved it at home. If you'd like to support the work that we do at Food Lovers TV, do consider joining our membership community on YouTube by hitting the join button below or on the home page. You could pledge a nominal sum and receive special privileges like behind the scenes footage, shoot updates, access to live Q&As and a lot more. You could support us on our Patreon page as well. For more info, check out the links in the description below. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share and leave a comment below. Happy eating!